Hi, this is Justice with Tablet Pro. In this video, I wanted to talk about the Slim Pen 2. Flip it around so you can see the button. <laughs> all right, the Slim Pen 2. And we're going to be talking about all the different aspects of it. I had a lot of questions myself. And so uh, I got one for testing. I have a Surface Pro 8 right here and a Surface Laptop Studio in route that should be here today. Fingers crossed. Hopefully it will be here very soon versus late in the day. So the first couple questions I had is if the Slim Pen 2 was backwards compatible. Now, backwards compatibility can mean a lot of different things. On the box, there we go. That's going to be backwards, so it's not really going to matter. Um, what it says is Surface Pro X 7 Plus, Surface Pro 8, Laptop 4, Laptop Studio, and Duo 2. That is the devices that we are showing compatibility with. Now on the Surface Pro 7 Plus, which is what I'm recording this video on, I get a nicer quality line than I would get with the Surface Pen, but it's very comparable to this stylus right here, the one by Renacer, the R520C. The Surface Pen, um, I will put some clips over the top of this video right here. Uh, uh, actually, we'll just open it up and we can look at it. We're here inside of Rebel 4. And the questions I had about the Slim Pen 2 is um, how does it perform on these other devices that it says it's compatible with? So the first one I'm going to use is the, uh, actually, let's use the Silver Surface Pen. This is the 2017 model has the one button on the side, and that's the right-click button, and we're going to say Surface 2017, Surface 2017. This is a black one, same thing. I know that a lot of people have said that their Surface pens work better than this for them, I've tested at Best Buy and the Microsoft Store, and it's pretty consistent for me. Um, if you have a better one, that's fantastic. All right, so here is the Slim Pen 2. Let's make sure we know which ones are which. This one is Slim 2. And you can see there's a little bit of improvement. This is the R520C, and we have to turn it on. So here's the point. On the Surface Pro 7 Plus, unless there's an update that really improves the quality of the line, I'm not seeing a lot of great improvements. So what what part of it is compatible? Of course it's compatible. It uses the same digitizer. So there's a couple other questions I had, obviously, and I answered these in a few other videos, and that was how does this perform compared to the Surface Pen and other pens that are on the market? So you can see here I start with the Slim Pen 2, and then I move to the Surface Pen, the 2017 model. And then I have a black 2017 model, and so I do that one next here. And you can see there's there's a lot of jitter. This is the the main thing that artists complain about with the Surface line, is they're great computers with the processors and the speed of the hard drive and and the price point compared to Wacom alternatives. However, there's just way too much wobble in the line. So here with this new version, I have uh, two Slim Pen 2s that I'm testing with. And uh, you can see here that the line quality is far, far better with the Slim Pen 2 versus the Surface Pen um, from 2017. That's great. There's a new chip in, in the Slim Pen 2, the G6. And uh, you'll see here, uh, I'm going to test with the only other brand of stylus that I like, and if you've watched this channel, that you're very well aware of that. 
Uh, I like the Renacer brand uh, because they have a cleaner line than the Surface Pen. And so here you can see the difference between the line qualities, quite significant. And I'm using whiteboard because whiteboard does the worst job of fake correcting the line or stabilizing, smoothing the line. And so um, you get to see what it really is doing. So if you go into another program that doesn't have line stabilization built in, you're going to see um, this type of work. OK, OK, so here I've got the R520C. And I want you to notice the difference between the lines. And the reason that I'm pushing this, and I don't, I, 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 I care a little bit whether you buy this stylus from me or from Amazon, but it's really not the point. The point is that there's an alternative for about 35 bucks that does a similar quality to the Slim Pen 2. So uh, I was originally thinking that it did not attach magnetically however it does it does attach magnetically to the side and it does on the slim or the on the laptop studio or will attach on the bottom of the device magnetically uh, when the keyboard is not there it does the same thing as well and that'll work with a slim pen or with another properly placed magnetized stylus like the r520c so if you guys are looking for something like this, you can find it on my website, tabletpro.com, or you can go to Amazon and order it from um, Pencilology, which I think is a very clever, clever name. I'll put that link in the description. If you purchase from either of those, I will get a um, smaller commission for the Amazon link, uh, like $1.00 and $10 from my own site. So if you'd like to support my work here, you can do it that way. We ship very quickly or from the Amazon site. If you want to use just the search bar inside of Amazon so that I don't get any commission, that's totally fine. Um, little annoying, but, <laughs> but the point is, is there are options and I want you guys to know what those are. Best options, I've done a lot of research for years to try and find the best options for artists of which I am a part, and I don't like spending money, extra money on different things if you don't have to. Just their options, that's all. So compatibility, question is, is that the haptics? And the haptics I'm gonna go into in just a second, uh, or is that the G6 chip in it that works with this, the digitizer, the screen, to make a better quality line? At the moment, I don't know. Um, subscribe because I will be trying to find out what does the compatibility mean. Now, if you go into the settings here, let me go to settings, let me go to Bluetooth, and down to pen and Windows ink. On the Surface Pro 8, there's an additional option right here, which I'll show um, that is the haptics, and you can adjust it from little baby waves like Florida waves or vibrations to big California waves, which are, are bigger. And really what it feels like is it feels like a um, the HD rumble on a Surface Switch controller. So if you've ever played Mario Party and you are doing that, that game where uh, there's little spots on the screen and you're fishing, and you've got your little boat and your fishing pole and you're trying to find the rumbliest spot. That is how it feels. So when you push lightly, it does a low rumble, a light rumble, not low, light rumble, up to a heavier rumble when you push harder, um, possibly also when you move faster, I'm not sure. So that, uh, and there's two options. There's uh, basically rumble haptics while inking and haptics on events, like if you're tapping a button. So here, see if you can see this. So here, so it's got, uh, the sound is kind of like you're getting a text message and your phone is on something like a book, maybe not like a metal table or something really, really loud, but 
the little haptic engine, it doesn't feel... So, one, the pen is very light. It's not super light. It doesn't feel like garbage, but it does feel light. The eraser... It's kind of wiggly. And it doesn't feel like it's on correctly. It feels like you should be able to detach this and stick in a USB-C cord or something and charge it. You can't charge this. So when I got this, I got this separate of the keyboard and there was no way to turn it on. In order to turn it on, you have to actually dock it in a charging bay for one second. And that's the official way to turn on the stylus. Now there's more battery than that, but that's how you activate it. Like when you get a debit card in the mail and you have to call a number. It's deactivated until you charge it for one second charges super fast. I think I, I, I had to drive to Best Buy and then slip it underneath a Surface Laptop Studio to get it to charge, and it charged maybe 10% in three or four minutes. It was very, very fast. And this is, of course, a Bluetooth button. In case you're curious, this is a Bluetooth button. It has the same functionality as uh, other Bluetooth buttons on the Surface Pen. All right, so that rumble property can be when you're interacting with elements or uh, when you're inking. Again, it's it's dependent on how strong uh, seems to be based just on pressure. Now the vibration speed is um, not quite as fast as I would like. So I was using it in whiteboard and it's app dependent. So there's a handful of apps uh, that have this rumble feature built in Microsoft Journal, OneNote, whiteboard, uh, the ink input field, like the text when you handwrite the notes uh, there, uh, concepts has support and um, sketchable. Now in Whiteboard, and if you know of other programs where there's compatibility, please comment below. Um, whiteboard, it was a pulsy feeling. So it kind of had like this type of feeling instead of a really fast vibration. So if you're sketching on a computer, or if you're sketching on a piece of paper, the little bumps in the paper, the texture of the canvas against the um, tip of a, a pen, ballpoint pen or lead, they're different, but it's all of the vibrations, the little tiny vibrations we feel after it passes over every grain of the paper. So it's a really fast, and this had a feeling in whiteboard that I was going over the top of something with big bumps in it. It was a, it was a different feeling, and basically the speed of that vibration really makes a difference. Uh, like whoop, 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 whoop versus zzz, and you want zzz instead. And so in whiteboard, it was weird. And they may adjust that in Sketchable and some of the other apps it actually feels pretty good. But it has me left with a feeling that I should be able to hear the stylus too. So Microsoft, if you're listening, and we may end up doing this inside of the pen tool, which, by the way, if you own a Surface Stylus and you don't have the pen tool, I highly recommend it. It looks like this. Yep. And you can change what the buttons on the Surface Pen do, and it will open and close the artist pad, which is what you see on the left. It's a touch keyboard, which you can use in drawing programs or note-taking programs or whatever you use keyboard shortcuts in. So it left me wanting sound, like I want to hear, hear a corresponding drawing sound to go with that rumble. And, and so it's a good step up. I, I will say that it's a good step up. The pen, like I said, this feels a little like it doesn't fit real well. The vibrations also feel like the haptic engine is slightly smaller than the place that it fits in. And so sometimes it's got an annoying buzzing sound. Um, and then depending on how I'm holding the stylus, I, you might push the sides in um, strong enough that the vibration just 
rattles it, it vibrates the entire body of the pen not just that little tiny section the vibration by the way is centered right about here right about here uh, not back here now this pen has a couple different magnetic points those magnetic magnetic points are right here if I set this on the side of my Surface Pro 7, it will attach magnetically and it will attach at both points, but not correctly. So lengthwise, you can see the difference. This is a Surface Pen. Uh, there we go. This is a Surface Pen. You can see the length. The Slim Pen 2 is shorter. This is how wide it is. It's quite narrow. This is the R520C stylus. And these have different magnetic sides. So if you try and put this, it, the uh, polarity of the magnets will push this away if you put it in the wrong spot. Now, on the Surface Pro 8, there are not magnetic spots on the side. Like this has the one for the charging, for the charging port. But you can attach it here. And uh, for me, that was actually a really big deal because I'm used to putting my stylus somewhere when I'm drawing. So if I'm using it, I'm not setting it in my lap, I'm setting it back on the side of the screen with the Surface Pro 7. Here, if it's this way, it doesn't do a good job. This direction does because of the polarity of the magnets. Uh, the initial activation force I do feel like was better. So let's go ahead and go over here. All right, this is Rebel. If you guys are not using Rebel for drawing, it is absolutely phenomenal. Um, that looks really cool. So it's easier. I would say like 20% easier to draw um, faint light pressure lines, 20% easier than the surface stylus. Um, but if you're using the Surface Stylus or any stylus and you are having a hard time doing low pressure lines, there is there is another solution. So let's go ahead and open up Windows here. And we're going to go to the Surface app. The Surface app has been redesigned. It looks like a little tab of Surface devices. So here we have a couple different things. You can see Slim Pen 2, uh, Surface Pen, and I can click here and I can choose Settings. I can click here and choose Pen Pressure. And Pressure Sensitivity, and we want to bring this down a little bit lower. I don't like the default setting of 7. I think it, it steals too much of the ability to draw faint lines. So here with this set at three or four, you can get a really nice, clean, easy range. Uh, but keep in mind that you can also do that with another stylus. Now I'm not, I'm not in any way against the Surface Slim Pen. I think it's a, a nice design. I think that it's a lot better than the Surface Pen 2017 model. A lot better, absolutely a lot better, cleaner lines and everything. But I don't want people to think that there's only one option and that one option costs $130 um, and that you can't charge it without an additional charging method because there's not a standard easy way to charge the Slim Pen 2, that they have to upgrade to a Surface Pro 8 to get better line quality or that they have to spend uh, this much money on the only stylus available for the Surface Pro 8. It's just not the case. A number of different styluses do fit um, fairly decently in the charging port section of the Surface Pro 8 keyboard, which I, I'll do another follow-up video and demonstrate that. Uh, it's not perfect, but you can close the keyboard case and you can keep the pen safe in there. Obviously it won't charge, but you can put a second or a different stylus in there and it will fit although it creates a little tiny bump, um, not a lot. So what other things about the stylus? The tip is sharper than the original Slim Pen, but it doesn't really make any difference because it doesn't draw a smaller or larger line based on the thickness of the tip. 
but it, it looks pointier. <laughs> the button is a little hard to click. It's slightly below the surface of the stylus. Um, not bad, but it's not something that you're going to click easily. And it's a little higher on the pen that I'm used to holding my pen. So here, with these other styluses, I'm choking down here. And notice the placement of the button here is quite a bit further up, like this. So you're holding it a little bit more, uh, a little further back when you're holding it. Again, not a big deal, but not something that I would say if you're using the, the uh, side button on the, on the stylus that this would be a non-ideal option for you. All right, if you guys have questions about the Slim Pen 2, I don't have a Slim Pen 1 to compare it to. I, I, I'm not planning on doing that test. I know that the, a number of people have been asking about the um, comparison between this and the Apple Pencil second generation and how the two of them compare in line quality. My initial thoughts are that it's close. I don't think it's as clean. I don't think it's as clean of a line as the Apple Pencil second gen or even first gen, but I do think that it's nicer in a number of different ways. And I far, 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 far prefer the Windows operating system and all of my programs versus a closed Apple system. Um, so, all right. That's my closing thought. If you guys have questions, then um, put it in the comment section. And if you use a stylus on a Windows 10 tablet, then this is a great channel for you. So please subscribe. All right, until next time, stay creative and have a wonderful day.